to you something that two or three weeks ago, I don't know, even know how I got this. It came to me, and and um, Judge Antonin Scalia. Do you remember who he was? Do you remember who he was? Just a few years ago, he was one of the Supreme Court justices, and he died while he was away from uh, in on a little rest time. And he wrote this, and listen to this, because he this has been probably, well, probably five years ago, six years. Time flies, so I'm not real sure. But he said this, God assumed from the beginning that the wise of the world would view Christians as fools. And he has not been disappointed. If I have brought any message today, it is this. Have the courage to have your wisdom regarded as stupidity. Be fools for Christ and have the courage to suffer the contempt of the sophisticated world. That is a strong, that's powerful. I don't know why, honestly, but we do this. We get shocked at anything as the church when it's already been written in his word. We have a guidepost for everything that's going on. Before I go on, though, Phyllis, we love you. Her husband, Pat, how, that was last week, wasn't it? The funeral and stuff. Yeah. And Steve, there will never be another Steve Height. I'm just going to say it right here. Phyllis knows better than any of us. And, um, you know, our druthers are not what God says it's time for. And I was so disappointed because I had that crazy flu and it went into bronchitis and I couldn't get here for anything and I would text her along and I it's hard see I didn't get to I didn't what do they call that I didn't have an ending I didn't get to finish it out and I, I when I come in here this morning and saw her sitting there and that empty seat it like you know but I truly believe this morning, I believe this with all my heart, it won't be long till we'll be leaving here. I'm not saying that, you know, I've heard it all my life. I heard it in my little girl years. I heard it in my teen years. I heard it 20s, 30s, 40s, and then as you all just guessed, the rest of the years. And, uh, but wow, I don't have to hear it to see it I know it and uh, I just want to read before I get into what I'm going to give Matthew 24 a few verses because basically Matthew 24 is the first part of Matthew 24 is where we are uh, verse 3 I'll start at verse 3 Matthew 24 verse 3 this was Jesus sitting with the disciples on the Mount of Olives. And he, it says, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? There's three questions they're asking right there. The coming of Jesus, the rapture is set apart from the end of the age. It's not the same thing. So we, the church, will be taken out of here before full tribu tribulation hits. The only thing about that is don't wait till you see tribulation because what you're seeing right now is nothing to compare to what it's going to be. It's nothing. And I saw, uh, I was thinking this morning when I went to church, I came and there was like maybe I passed two cars. I mean, it was like weird. It really was strange. And I'm thinking, this is, this is so strange. But it came to me. This, what you do to control a superpower, which is America, is strike fear in the hearts of the people. And you control with fear. And that's how the Antichrist will control. And we see that right now. Now, in saying that, I'm not saying that there's not a coronavirus flu. I'm not, do you want to hear to say I said? There, I, I'm not saying that. It's come over from China and, and we're dealing with things. But I am saying that at the same time, fear can be used to make it way worse than it is so that we, the people, 
bend to their will and not what the Father, God, and the Holy Ghost say. That's why we have to pray. We have to have wisdom. And we have to just follow. You know, people's, God's put leaders over us to follow them in these times because everybody's not going to know what to do. And there's a lot of scared people right now. But, <coughs> excuse me, in the Word of God, there's 365 fear nots. Do you know that? 365 times it says fear not. That's a fear not for every day of the year. So if God tells us, he don't say fear not except when. He just says fear not. And so we just don't fear. We just fill ourselves with faith, but we walk in the wisdom. Of this. It's like Jesus had this wisdom. Do you know as he walked the earth, earth for three years as in ministry, he could have destroyed it at any time, but that wasn't the plan. It wasn't the fullness of timing yet. Because he gave man, he created man and woman, every person with a will to serve him. Because he didn't want robots, he wanted a family. And so therefore, he could have done a whole lot of things. He could do a whole lot of things right now. He could lift this thing right now. But it is playing out exactly what he said would happen in the Word of God. It's just that we've never seen the acceleration of things as we're seeing right now. Excuse me. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Number one, saying, I am the Christ, and they will deceive many. How many times have we seen that through the years? Not just through the years. Remember Waco, Texas. I mean, it's been forever that people will kill themselves because that ruler says to do that. Number one, deception is rampant. I'd say that's what's going on. One of the things going on right now. For many, uh, and, excuse me, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. You tell me. And see that you're not troubled. I mean, in the middle of this, Jesus stops talking to those disciples and just says, see that you're not troubled. See that you're not troubled. In other words, you got to put faith in you. you. It's up to you to not be troubled. It's what's in your heart. It's what you're filled with. It's been, I've, I've heard it's been said about me while running for this office that I haven't paid the dues. That's all I'll say. <laughs> See that you are not troubled for all of these things, all of these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Nation for nation will rise against nation. This is one reason the United States of America has experienced coronavirus because a nation hates us. Nation will rise against nation. It happens all the time. Kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines. Pestilences. That's what this is, airborne. An airborne situation. And earthquakes in various places. Was that last week? Nashville, Tennessee had an earthquake right downtown. I talked to Candy Christmas that morning after when I saw it. I got a hold of her and I said, what is it? And she said, the bridge is destroyed. And if you know what she does, she's, she feeds the homeless under the bridge every Tuesday night. They can have as many as six, seven hundred. She's done that for years now where it's a major, major operation in Nashville, Tennessee. And that everybody knows about it. The government, the law, everybody knows about it. And she's took care of all these people. And I'm telling you, you can go down there. And she has warehouses that are just crammed full, packed with what businesses give them. And it's, it's, it's just unbelievable what, what she has done just because, let me tell you how I got started. She was in a depression, wanted to die several years ago so depressed, didn't know where her life was going. And uh, a man saw her and said, I want you to come with me. And they went on Tuesday night under the bridge in Nashville. She had met, He said to her before they went, can you cook? She said, I can cook jambalaya. And he said, cook a pot of jambalaya and come on with me. They went to the bridge, at, under the bridge in Nashville and fed 
people that night, and in, in her, God birthed the burden to help the down and out and the homeless and the hungry and all that. And that's her whole life. So she has fed these people. She counts 1,600 people that's, that's her babies in this homeless ministry called Under the Bridge. She watches, the, the tornado came right down in to the town. And it destroyed that bridge. And I said, what are you going to do? I said, I know, yeah, I know what you're going to do. But I mean, what are you going to do temporarily? Because it's what we do. We, whatever happens, happens. We get another way and a direction and we move on with what God's called us to, though it may change methods. And she said, I'm not backing down. I'm going stronger. That night, she was out there, not at the bridge. She wasn't allowed because it's so devastated. But they were out there, everybody, people who had helped her, who would get to her. And those homeless people were showing up, and they were right in the middle of them, just feeding them, giving them coats, giving them gloves. No bridge, no nothing. But this is what's going on last week in a city in the United States of America. It's exactly what the Word says. Earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And that is, and when you say the beginning of sorrows, sorrows has not hit yet in the world as far as the United States of America and a few other nations, the way third world countries have gone through things. We as Christians are not being told yet to deny Jesus or we die. But that is already going on in third world countries. They are dying for the cause of Christ. They're dying so, because they will not. And, and, and all of my life I've heard all of this preached. But when I was younger, I was waiting to see. It's no longer there. We're in this time. We are truly in this time. And if you have kids, God spoke to me this week concerning this because I was really before him. I just sitting a lot, meditating, thinking, what God, what's happening? Anytime God does allow something, God did not, and let me make a statement here, God did not create coronavirus. Everybody say that's right. First of all, it's a man-made virus. And I won't stop there. Then after that, people just get infected. So it spreads. But God will use this time. Will he not to speak to your loved ones who have never really thought much about coming to church or have been in rebellion, didn't want to come to church, didn't want to come to the Lord? Because I've had calls this week. What are you thinking? What's going on? I can't believe it. And I've said, you know what's going on. You know what's going on. All I'm saying is this. I don't have a, 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 a chart up here. I don't have the different years. I don't have all that. I'm just telling you. I don't think we have a whole lot of time and it we better grab as a church this opportunity. Don't let it pass us by and use it to pull the harvest in that is God's will for us to bring in. He will use everything for the furtherance of his kingdom, but he's got to have a church that is willing to say, yes, Lord, I will speak for you. I will stand for you. I want to walk in your character, your anointing, your presence. I want to be all that you've called me to be. And this is the time that we're in. I got a, and I have a pastor friend, her and her husband, and they're in Philadelphia. And, and she texted me this morning and she said, we're having our two services, but there's no other church in the whole city open. I said, and she said, but we just felt like we were to stay open, at least offer a place. So the very first service early, they had more than half not show up. But uh, then she said, but I'm excited because the prophetic side of me, here's what she said, the prophetic side of me sees a move of God and a revival and a harvest like we've never seen before. Because nothing like this ever happens and catches God by surprise. He knows it all. And if we'll listen, and if we'll be very keen to His voice, He's going to lead us to people who need ministry right now or have them come to you. 
you know what? The church can't hide away in this. We're going to comply to what we're being told by the government. But at the same time, somebody calls me, somebody wants to meet me. I'm going to do that and I'm going to pray with them. And who? Hey, listen. Can God just say, 200 people right here got uh, infected, let's pray, and they be healed miraculously? What if God would just come down miraculously and wipe this thing off the face of the earth? Now, they would give the glory to somebody else, but the church has got to stand up in this hour, be bold, be strong, give Him the glory that is due His name, and not worry. And something else she told me, she said her husband was giving the church directions, you know, wash your hands. But after we've washed our hands, our hands, maybe we should wash one another's feet. They're not going to, but I'm saying it's a thought. What is that? It's a sign of unity. One in Christ. Humility, brokenness, service. That's how the church has to stay in this hour. I'm, I'm trying to see something right here. I, I heard the Lord tell me, this is what she said, I am bringing a Goshen distinction. Goshen distinction. Does everybody know what Goshen is? It was the place of the presence of God, and, and the people who were there didn't get the diseases didn't go through what the people on the outside went through in the Old Testament. Whoever was in Goshen was protected. His presence protected them. His presence surrounded them. Nothing came upon them because they were at His presence. And she said God spoke to her and said, I am bringing a Goshen distinction upon my people. In other words, what everybody else goes through, his presence is protecting. Y'all really believe this? How many am I speaking to and you're saying, I believe that with all my heart? I'm bringing a Goshen distinction. Now, let me tell you what's in my spirit. And we're gonna, I'm going to talk for another five minutes and then we're going to pray. Because the President of the United States has called for a day of prayer today, on this day. It has been called from the very top office of our land. So those who comply with that, I believe that God can bring a revival, a Goshen distinction, a move of His Spirit like we've never seen before and clear this whole thing out and leave people going, what happened? I really believe it. I really do believe that. Excuse me, just one second. But we, the church, must walk the Goshen distinction. We must walk it out in humility, not arrogance. Not everyone walks at the level of our faith and revelation. But we must lead them. This is really important. I was sitting at my house this week, and this is not not deep and not real long and drawn out or anything. I just feel like we need to come together. I was sitting this week and God says, I never miss an opportunity to speak. But I want to speak through my people who's willing to speak for me during this time. You say, well, they've told us this, they've told us that. Because I asked the Lord, I said, well, Lord, what if the, the government tells us this? He said, render to Caesar that which is Caesar's. It's exactly what he said about paying taxes in the New Testament. You render, you do what Caesar has said. Go pay your taxes. But at the same time, while you're paying the taxes, somebody's looking for you to lay hands on them, and they're going to be saved, healed, delivered, set free. This is what I'm talking about. We are in a war. It is no time to be fearful. It is no time to back away or to back down. It is time to stand up and say, I belong to the King of kings and Lord of lords. I know who I am and I know just where I'm going. I'm a child of the heavenly king and I'm headed for heaven. I'm more than a conqueror in this world. I'm standing on the promises in God's word because I know just who I am and where I'm going. And we got to stand in that, in humility, in servanthood, and watch God use you. Have you been asking God to use you? 
Have you been asking God for a double portion anointing? Well, have you positioned yourself for him to? Have you positioned himself for him to? Or are you see what God has done? How many remembers the prophecy last year that we showed by Kent Christmas up here? And it was talking about the NFL and all sports that God was going to bring them to their knees and put a stop all at once. What God is allowing to happen in the midst of this is all of our schedules are going by the wayside. And we're just stopping and standing still, still and watching him move and listening and being keen to his voice and moving when he says move, stay put when he says stay put and follow leadership as we go through this in this crisis. Because it is a crisis. I will never belittle the people who are afraid. I want to help them. I want to go to them and build them up. But we've got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let's stand together.